small, medium, and large. For the big guys and for the women, we have the gloves just for you. So that's really good. So there's this one program called Pure Ref, and I really recommend it. Pure Ref is fantastic because you can go on pureref.com, I believe. And you could actually use that to uh, put your reference uh, always on top and you can change the size of it. It's like one of the best things since sliced bread, honestly. So I highly recommend it. Pure Ref, that's P-U-R-E, uh, P-U-R-E-R-E-F, yes. PureRef.com, so definitely look into that. Okay, so there we are. And so today we are going to do part one, as I said. And so what I like to do in part one is really work out my drawing, really get that going. That's so important. And I can't stress enough how important it is to get your drawing really going, you know? And let's see. Okay, so I have my reference here. And now what I'm going to do with my mechanical pencil is I'm just going to go ahead and work out my drawing a little bit. You know, this is where you have your chance to make it right. And you don't want to, you don't want to be cavalier about it. You really want to make sure that you're, you're doing the right thing. Because how you start is really important. Unlike the saying, it's how you finish that's important. Well, how you start is really important as well. So if you have any questions, uh, if I don't answer right away because I haven't seen it, so ask it again, okay? Because I'm looking down, working on this piece here. It's a beautiful uh, woman, and so I'm excited to paint her. And a uh, little, little different model than I usually paint, but we gotta keep on our toes, right? We, don't want to get complacent or do the same thing over and over again, you know? There we go. The eyes are really the most important part. So if uh, you want to make sure you get that correct. With Pure Ref, I could really zoom in there. Has anyone out there used Pure Ref? And if you have, what kind of experience do you have? And if you're not using Pure Ref, let me know what software you are using. See if I can do without that fan. That fan's pretty loud. Sounds like a train is coming. Oh, the photocopy machine. That's pretty good. That's old school, definitely. Photocopies are really good as long as you get a good copy. I find a lot of times uh, the values are off, so that's why I use something like Pure Ref. But definitely, it's always good to have a couple of really good photocopies. I find the uh, type of paper is really important when you print them out, right? Isn't that so, Chris? As you can see, my initial projection is right on the money. So, you know, you've got to make sure that every step you make as beautiful as possible. Not every step's going to be beautiful, but hey, John, how you doing? Good to see you. Not every step's going to be beautiful, but you make it as beautiful as possible. So that's crucial. So make sure that you are at least doing that. 
You know, you, like I said, you can't make it perfect, but you can make it as beautiful as you can make it. Very, very important. So right here in the corner of the mouth, I didn't get too specific with the projection, so I'm working on that right now. Comes up right here, and then right there. Hey Brad, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Nice, nice to uh, be hanging out with you, sir. So you have a really good view of my my cup so that's very important in a live stream piece of lemon all right remember just like a calligrapher you want to be as beautiful with your lines if you're painting a contour, you really, really want those those contours that have a sort of uh, grace to them. It's so important. Oh, I want to show you something, guys. This is a pretty cool thing. So recognize this magazine, guys, anyone? With my buddy Steve Leahy on it. So when I had no idea, this is really cool. I had no idea. So I open up the magazine, and what do I see on the uh, reader page, reader's gallery? is this painting Does that look familiar guys that is my amy lee so that's pretty exciting so i was pretty happy about that that's a nice little surprise you know so yeah steve's on the cover he has the whole whole article which is so impressive you know just an amazing painting he has in there just fantastic Now this whole technique that I do is born out of a lot of years of study, working in a lot of different mediums, a lot of different mediums such as pastel and oils and watercolor and pen and ink and all of that, you know? Oh great, so uh, great Mike, that's fantastic. So. Hopefully you'll see this uh, painting in that trial. Uh, hopefully this issue will be that trial. That would be cool. The trial magazine. Okay. All right. So one of the things I like to do is make several printouts of this. And then I could use that as my freehand shield. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and show you how I do that. So here I have the exact replica of the uh, picture on my, on my working Canson paper. So let me go get my X-Acto knife. Look at all that money. <laughs> That's not a lot of money. That's already been spent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and lower the aperture so you can see what I'm doing. Is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this so I can create a mask. So I am just 
uh, going to be painting on the face. <coughs> So two things I have to say, which is really good when you are working, uh, when you're cutting, get good, practice. People ask me, how do you get good? Do it over and over again. That's how you get good. There's no secrets, no secret techniques. There's no like, well, you want to no, know, none of that. So basically what you want to do is do it over and over again. That's the only way, over and over again. So, there are a few things that I heard that help. One person said, and I really like it, is when you are cutting, always look uh, like maybe a quarter of an inch ahead of your blade. And it really does help guide you. So I like that technique. Also, Try and keep the blade on the surface. Don't lift the blade. You want one really beautiful cut. We're not doing frisket, so we don't need at all. We do not need any kind of adhesive here, which is good. Right, there we go. And we'll just cut this across. There we go. Beautiful, see that? Now we have a perfect little stencil. So then you're gonna say to me, well, how do you put it on? You're gonna, gonna, this is part two. So watch part two, okay? So are you watching? Give me a shout out that you're watching, so this way I'm not just wasting my time. A lot of conversation going on, but not too much about the live stream. So just uh, give me a shout out that you're paying attention. So just help out my ego a little bit, all right? Thanks. Okay, so we got one person watching, so that's good. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting these holes in and you're going to see exactly what I'm doing. It's going to make sense. Hey, what's up there, Rick? Good to see you, man. So glad you can make it. So Chris is watching. Okay, we got two people watching. Nice. Because I paint better on my own without talking. If no one's watching, I'll turn it off. Happy Wednesday, yes. So watch what I'm doing, guys. This is going to be pretty cool. I started using this little, like, uh, hole puncher. But I found that to be extremely messy, even a little bit more messy than I'm doing here, you know? Okay, Mike's watching, that's good. Stay tuned, Mike, and you can, this is all going to make sense. Let's see. Like I said, I don't like magnets, and I don't like frisket. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and pull out my Vega 1000 in just a few. And we'll get this show on the road here. 
Old school registration marks. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so now we have this. So now we need some masking tape. I'll be right back and I'll get some masking tape. Up, oh, it's right there. Look at that. I organized my studio. I can't find a thing. So let's go ahead and do this. You don't have to be neat with this. You just have to cover it up, right? You just have to make sure you're covering, you're covering this up. I want to make sure that I'm just working on the face and not the hair. I find that magnets, when you spray on them, they get uh, paint on them and they become messy and, uh, you know, just cause problems down the line. So that's why I don't like magnets, you know. Just a, just a little bit of the secret sauce there. Uh, just a teaser there, Brad. That's all I'm giving them. Just showing them there's, uh, there's uh, life beyond beyond frisket. I know it's hard to believe guys, but yes, you there is like beyond frisket. <laughs> That's a pretty cool cup there, Mike. That's for sure. But if I don't cover up these holes, then it's going to be a problem. So, so make sure you cover up every bit of these holes. If you don't, it's just going to be a world of pain. So make sure that you cover this up. See, I do these live streams because I want to give back. I want to share with you uh, my, my findings to make your life a little bit easier and a lot more enjoyable. So that's, that's my MO. That's why I do these live streams. I mean, I could do the, uh, the ones that you record and they seem to be a lot easier and I make more money from them because uh, you get more ad revenue and whatnot. But I think doing this, my reasoning is that you can ask questions and that's important. Don't you guys agree? Let's see if I get this correct. Just want to make sure I get this right on the money there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's see. Let me just see. This is the great thing. If this was frisket, this was impossible. But since we're doing it this way. It's really pretty cool. Okay. There we go. So now we just press this in like so. And this isn't going anywhere, not anywhere. So that's really good. So it's a good technique. Oh, so you're still hearing it. Uh, let me see if I, I'm gonna go ahead and test the sound. Oh, so you're still hearing it. Uh, let me see if I, I'm gonna go ahead and test the sound. Yeah, there is a little bit of uh, so you're still hearing it. Uh, let me see. That's the air conditioner. Let me see if I just take off the air conditioner for a time being. If I don't sweat, maybe it could be it. that's what's causing it. So we'll see. Anything I can to help you guys out, make it a better experience. You know me. I'm all for it. Okay, so there we are. Now we can go ahead and come in with our light mixture. Those who have seen me do this before. Um, so, very cool, okay. All right, now, so it's good now, so that's great. 
So like I said, always trying to help you out. So I have some of my green tea with lemon. Let me put that over to the side. Let me go ahead. Move this airbrush and we'll go ahead and start with the white mixture. Now the white mixture is a very important part of this technique. It sort of establishes, it's really not to seal the paper or anything. It's to create sort of a three-dimensional lifting of the lights off to the surface. So we have that basis and then we can go in with the, with the values to darken around it. So Rick, okay, cool. See Rick, you're important to me. So that's why I'm, I'm you know, making sure we do that. We, get, we fix that for you. All right, so we'll put my glasses to the side. Now we get the light mixture. The white mixture right here. Let's see if I can just lighten this up just a tad. Remember, even in the beginning stages, you really want to go ahead and, and do the one second rule, you know? Oh, thank you so much, Rick. I appreciate that. Rick, you made me feel good. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so when I go ahead and start, I always like to have a scrap piece of paper, uh, the same surface that I'm working on, and just go ahead and see how the airbrush is flowing. It's working correctly. Everything looks good. Checking the air pressure. You don't want to do those things on your painting. You know what I mean? You want to make sure you do that on a test paper. Also in the beginning, the uh, nozzle might get stuck a little bit, you know, from when it dried, even just water. So see that? That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're testing not on your artwork, but on the test piece of paper. That was my fault. I pulled back the needle before I pulled back the needle with a full cup. So that means I'm going to have to clean inside here. But it's no big deal right now. Roll with that. Okay, great. So now we're in business. So I'm going to be approximately, I would be about two and a half inches from the surface. And I'm maybe even three inches and I'm just going to very lightly establish the lights. One second rule is key and you want to be very subtle. You can always put more on but it's going to be a heck of a hard time to take it off, right? So this is an advanced part. If you're first starting with the technique I really say uh, don't try this part for your first painting using this technique. This is something you want to do for painting number three or painting number four, uh, even number painting number two. Start with the white mixture because the white mixture, if you put too much in, it's it's going to inhibit you. It's not going to help you. I'm using a freehand shield because I want to keep that really beautiful uh, edge of the nose there, of the wing of her nostril. So I'm looking here and the wing of the nostril is actually what's lighter. So now I have to find that edge. So I'm going to put the airbrush down and I'm going to figure out how am I going to do this. So right here is pretty close. See that? And let me zoom in on for you because I know you guys like that stuff. And if I have the tools, why not? Right, guys? Okay, let's lighten it up for you. So we have the sound going good. And so, so far, so good. So about three inches from the surface. Very important thing. You see this little, uh, well, you can't see it. 
Well, I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm about three inches from the surface here. See that? Now I'm establishing the wing of the nostril right there. Now also there's a light right around this beautiful lip of hers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up the lip. And I'm just, this is one of the few times I'm going to do parallel and not perpendicular. Run it a few times, we'll do that. Okay, so you see, I don't have to worry about going to the edge. I'm gonna maintain that beautiful edge and I'll be able to bring in the, the, the dark because I have this cut out for later and I can put that there and then I can go put that beautiful dark and get that really nice edge. So, it's all like a chess game. You're thinking one, two moves ahead. About three and a half inches from the surface. One second rule. I'm not just putting down uh, white arbitrarily. When I'm further away, I'm actually putting down gray. It's a lighter gray than the paper. You want to use the gray. This is Pebble Gray by Canson. You want to use the gray as your mid-tone. So you're using the paper as a value. And that goes into more of a mastery of the actual uh, actual medium. This is my own medium using Canson paper, color line Canson, 184 pound pebble gray. The size is eight and a half by 11. Now over here, one of the reasons why I like this particular airbrush, this is the uh, Thayer and Chandler Vega 1000. The Vega 1000 is really a fantastic airbrush. I'll tell you two things that are fantastic. There's no O-rings in this thing except for here. You know, it's just a straight, perfectly cut tube where the needle goes through. So this thing is durable. Also, it has a 0.5 needle nozzle combination. So you're working in something thick like this white mixture. You're not going to have any problems. And also you're going to get a real beautiful atomization. So for this part of the job, it's, it's the perfect tool for the job. Is it the perfect airbrush? By no means. I use the Extreme Patriot Arrow. When I go ahead and make the adjustments, it is a perfect airbrush. But, it's not perfect for every job. This perfect for this, you know? So yeah, the Extreme Patriot's coming, but the Extreme Patriot Arrow is not perfect for this part. Good question there, Chris, that's for sure. So yes. So we're taking our time. So you see how we're just slowly uh, pulling in the lights. So we're gonna have that contrast later when we come in with the light mixture and then subsequently with the medium mixture. <coughs> As you can see, with the reference, I am looking at the big pieces right now, the big shapes. That's what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about little pieces here and there. I'm not getting involved in details. I'm getting involved. So when you're doing it in the beginning, you want to squint your eyes to the reference and you want to see those big pictures. You don't want to get caught up into little bits of detail. Detail right now is in the way. So you want to get the large relationships and go from there. Here we go. You understand the anatomy. You're not just copying down values. Anyone can do that. An inkjet printer can do that. You want to understand where the light's coming from. Some artists do this, and I think it's pretty cool. Some schools, uh, schools of thought, some teachers actually do that. So they'll say, decide where the light is coming from, what direction is the light coming from in the painting. 
A lot of times you can find it out through the actual cast shadow. So looking at our cast shadow right here, this is the only cast shadow I'm really seeing is right here and right over here. So the cast shadow is coming from the upper right. See that? So that's where the cast shadow. So when you think of that consciously, then you realize that anything is facing the upper right is going to get light. Anything that is facing the lower left is going to get shadow. Everything in between is going to have relative shadow and relative light. So when you go in with that kind of thinking, you're not just robotically copying values. That will make your life, your work lifeless. You want, you want to create portraits that, like the great masters, you know, what makes a Velazquez a Velazquez, right? You know, what makes a Johannes Vermeer a Johannes Vermeer? What makes a Rembrandt a Rembrandt? It's not because they went ahead and slavishly copied values. No, they were understanding light. They were trying to understand what's happening with the light. How, how all of this is coming together. She is a, a person that she's a three-dimensional object. And she's in this lighting situation, and the light is affecting her body, her face, her neck, her hair, her eyes. And that's, if we can look at it that way, we can have a much more profound visual experience. And in turn, the visual experience is going to be interpreted and given to the viewer. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. So we're not inkjet printers. So let's, let's use our mind, our beautiful minds, to take it to that next level. As everyone would say, let's, you know, turn it up a notch. Let's do that. Let's share that visual experience that we're having with our viewers. Because it is a beautiful experience. You know, Plato said that when we see something that's beautiful, it's a bit of heaven. And that's why, you know, it's a bit of perfection. It's not per perfect, but it's a tiny bit of perfection. And that's why we behold it as something dear. And that's why we, that's why I paint is because, uh, you know, it's just, it's profound. It's something that I want to share. I want to experience it longer than just a fleeting second. So that's something that you definitely want to have those, those thoughts, a uh, little higher thoughts than, than just slavishly copying values, okay? So here's uh, another area that I feel is uh, really good, is that with this extreme, with this uh, Thayer and Chandler, Vega 1000, you can actually come in with detail, and that's refreshing. So it's one of the few uh, 0.50s that I feel I could really, really just work this up. It's really nice. Nice experience. So the white I'm using, you can purchase the white mixture on my website. And it's paintingcliffs.com. So if you're interested, I do ship that internationally along with my ink mixtures. And there's also a link in the description field for that. So what this is, is uh, Drew Blair's Illustration Colors 5050 Illustration White, and I mix it with the 4012 Reducer 5050, and uh, so if you purchase from me, I give you just enough, you don't have to purchase the whole thing, and it's only like 
five dollars, which is a really good value as opposed to having to go out and buy the 50-50 illustration white and the reducer that comes out to twenty dollars. You can probably get one for that will last you maybe 10, 12 paintings. So definitely on my website, check it out, guys. Take your time. There's no points for speed. When it's finished, it's done. That's all that matters. So don't worry about speed. Take your time. And I can see right here, it's pretty light right next to her hair. Hairline right there. You really want to Make sure you're taking care of all the decisions you have to while you have the white in the airbrush. You don't want to go back to this stage. So we're one and done. Little tiny bit of white here in the teeth. I'm going to do a light dusting. Like I said, take your time, get this right, and your life will be much better. So right here, remember, the light's coming from the upper right, so anything facing the upper right is going to get the most light. So right here, you'll see that this part uh, underneath her mouth on her chin is really facing that light source. So that's why it's getting more light. See that? This is just to establish, that's all it is. It's just to establish. But if you do this correctly, she'll start to emerge almost immediately. And that's what you want to do. So we're here in October. Isn't that something, guys? It's October already. There's this whole thing about Inktober and people are doing Inktober. My thing is, every day of the week is Inktober for me. I'm working in the ink from one end of the year to the next. I don't need to get involved in this Inktober stuff. It's all like gimmicky stuff to get views and whatnot. So. But for me, it's not a gimmick. This is the real thing. This technique came out of a need, came out of, of, of doing this over the years. And so it wasn't to be quirky or different. It's just a, a technique that came out of, you know, wanting to work in black and white in the airbrush, but why go ahead and work in acrylic when you don't have to if you're working in paper? Ink is just so much better. Uh, you know, you're not working with acrylic. Acrylic has much thicker particles, all of that. And so that's why I worked in india ink so now that i went ahead and i pretty much maybe i can put a little bit more so let's put a little bit more of the light mixture in the airbrush okay whoop there we go just a little bit more we're just gonna give a little emphasis on where the light is uh is hitting most in more in, intensely so let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so I'm seeing some intense light here on the forehead. One of the things I always, you know, stress with my students is the forehead. The forehead is not this shiny thing, this robotic, 
plate that's on her head or on the, the person's head, it's, it has muscle and bone and it goes in and goes out. So you definitely want to understand the anatomy. A lot of you airbrush guys like doing skulls. When you're doing skulls, make sure you're paying attention to the anatomy and that's gonna help immensely your portrait. You'll understand why there's more light on this side of the forehead, why there's light right here over the eyebrow, and there's more light over this eyebrow, and then a shadow subsequently on the other side of that light is because it is actually uh, coming out with the orbital ridge just before the eye socket. So that actually creates a shadow and a light at the same time. Mike says, Tim, is 140 pound really needed? 110 pounds good enough for us broke people? No, definitely. Um, the 184 pound paper is crucial. Uh, if you have 140, I could live with that. I know De La Rowney is around 140. They're dreadnought gray. Anything less than that, you know, you, you want to have all the advantages that you can. And paper is not expensive, you know. Uh, it's an investment that you really should. I mean, that's something you don't really need to, to uh, you know, penny pinch with. Because the 184-pound paper is just going to accept the ink so perfectly. And when you erase, it's going to have a lot of give, Mike. And so, yeah, uh, that's the best investment that I think you could do is to go ahead and uh, get the 184-pound paper. You, anything, it's just like the perfect. It's not too thick. It's not like illustration board. And it's not too thin. It's not like the 90-pound or something like that. I, I do recommend you working on, uh, you know, thin paper as practice pieces because that's how we learn when things aren't so precious you know that we are sort of letting go and just sort of expressing ourselves and sort of be more daring and you can be a lot more daring when you are working on cheaper substrate so definitely do both uh, you can get some really nice bristol board like or vellum Bristol vellum is really good to work on, and that's pretty inexpensive, Mike. So that's good. But with this technique, you want that gray paper, so you could use the gray paper to uh, create, use that gray paper to uh, create mid-tones, so you have to work a lot less. And this working on a tinted paper with the white and the, and the, the value, I learned that from at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I used to look at the drawings that were actually not on display, and I would call the drawing archives room, and they were actually allowing me to hold those drawings in my hands, and it was, it was just an amazing experience. I'm talking drawings by Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, 19th century French academics, you know? It's, uh, it's an eye-opening experience, and you know, once you see stuff like that, you know, it's going to profoundly affect your art. And it, it would be crazy if it didn't, you know. So that's something. Wow, look at that. That's like really bright. So let me lower that a bit. That is bright. Holy cow. Let's see. Go to color. And we'll lower the light. And let's see. Lower the contrast so I don't look so scary. Not as scary as I do in real life. Let me lift that up a little bit. So look at this, guys. I want you to see that. Look how I actually went ahead and uh, organized my bookshelf. That was pretty cool. So I was, I was pretty happy with that. I'm going to raise the... Let's. Oh, that's purple. Whoa, okay. Give myself a little... There you go. I have a little life to me now. Let's see. And lower the contrast just a little bit. Lower the light. There you go. 
Okay, not too bad. So, so basically, you know, what's, what's happening is that we're creating a, a sort of basis to go lighter and go darker, right? We're going to go lighter with the white pastel. Uh, we're going to go darker with the ink and build that up till we slowly get all the relationships and then darken it to the really strong darks. And then from there, we're going to, uh, and then from there, we're gonna go ahead and hit the, uh, the dark mixture and really pop everything out. So there is a definite uh, method to this, which is really important. So that's really cool. It's Halloween, right? That's true. That's true. So, okay, great. So what we're going to do is we are going to clean out because this light mixture, you don't want it sitting in your air. You don't want this white mixture sitting in your airbrush too long. It's just disastrous. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take a few minutes to go ahead and clean that out. First thing is whenever you're cleaning airbrushes and stuff like that, you want to take your painting and you want to move it aside. So we'll do that there. And there we go. Let's see. Okay, we'll go to this scene over here. So this is a little bit different. It's a this is pretty powerful stuff. So what I do is when I go ahead and clean. I just take the cap, put it in there. Cap has to be cleaned because if you don't, that's going to come back and just mess up your day. So you want to make sure that you have a clean cap, clean airbrush on the inside and outside. This white mixture, if it dries in your airbrush, sayonara, because you're going to have an airbrush that is just not going to work as good as it did one time, no matter how much you clean it after it's a disaster like that. So definitely and let's see so we're gonna get this here and I like to just get a, a rag here let me just move this over to the side there you go okay so you can see what I'm doing so if you see over here you can see one of my pastel paintings let's see if I could lift this up a bit see that pastel painting over there pretty cool so yeah, I was painting in pastel for many, many years before I picked up an airbrush. So it was not like I was new. It was just I had to learn a different medium to say the same thing, you know. But it's really cool how my experience with drawing and my experience with pastel sort of creeped into my airbrush technique. And that's what I'm sharing with you guys right now. So what I do is I get rid of all the residual, all that residual paint that's in there, making sure that also there's nothing around on the sides. I also like my airbrushes looking brand new and not having any kind of paint or anything on the outside. And now I do use Q-tips. A lot of people will say, no, don't use Q-tips, whatever you do because the fuzzy part uh, gets in there. Well, that's true, but you have to know which Q-tips to get. The Q-tips I purchased right here are the CBS, sort of their brand Q-tips, and they basically don't shed. So I just put some of this in here, and I go in there and I pretty much dig out anything that might be in there. I'm just using I'm just using water. There's no there's no airbrush cleaner. There's there's no Windex. There's no Fantastic. There's no Future Floor Wax. If you continue, if you just go ahead and clean your airbrush as you go, just like if you clean your room every day, or you you know you wash your dishes after you eat, the job becomes little and and routine and easy. If you don't clean your airbrushes every day and you leave it there then it doesn't work and then you're online saying how do I clean an airbrush that's dirty so 
that's something you don't want to do. So take it from me. Whoa, look at that. That was fun. So let's continue doing this. Now also in this nozzle, so let me show you. So look in the nozzle, you see that? Let me, let me show you with the magic of a DSLR as a webcam. Look at that. Let me blow it up for you. This is gonna excite you, you're gonna be so happy. Let's see. There we go, so let's focus that. Wow, look at that, huh? This is, this is high tech. This is a high tech, this is a very, very high tech live stream now, isn't it? So that's really cool. So you see that? That's no good. See, some people will be like, look at that. So I need to file this nail. So, so what you have to do is you have to clean that. You're not done. And you see the needles there, so I'm not going to go ahead and just shove it a Q-tip in there and cause the problems. I'm not going to just put it aside and pretend it's clean because it's clean on the outside. Therefore, it's it's all clean, you know. Hey, Willie, how's it going? Good to see you. Hey, Chris, have a great night. I'll get those uh, uh, package out to you pretty soon. It's just uh, it was a crazy week this week. So I'm so glad you're here. Yes, yeah, yeah, stay safe, Chris. That's for sure. And Chris, always a pleasure. You're the greatest, you know, and thank you so much for protecting the streets. Uh, I really appreciate you. I just want you to know that, my friend. Okay, so now we got that done. So we can see what a mess it is and it's not clean. Then we can pull this off. Look at that. See that? And I can go ahead and we're going to take the needle out too. And depending on what we find, if, so if I took the needle out and there was like all kinds of white in here, then I would say, okay, I got to go in and clean out the center. But there really isn't. There's not much. Because remember, I pulled that out with paint in the chamber, which I shouldn't have. That was an oversight. But anyway, I'm just going to put the needle into the water. And so make sure that there's no tip dry before I put the needle back. So here I have the nozzle and uh, the air regulator, I guess it's called. And I'm just going to see that, just clean that and clean it on this side too. Because next time I work on this airbrush, I want it to work perfectly, like, like the day was brand new. You know what I mean? So, all right. So this, this is an important thing to learn. So this is why I'm actually going to include it into the live stream. Remember I told you about the cap. We're not done until this is, this is clean. So just putting in there and soaking, most of the white came off. But just take your napkin and you're just going to make sure this is perfectly clean. Then we're going to put the needle back in. Remember, I just used water, water, a napkin, and Q-tip. That's it, and it's perfect. You can actually uh, eat off of this airbrush. Not that you would want to, but you can. So, and then I would. We're gonna go put some more water through this, and just make sure that it is spraying well here. And, when I'm, and what you want to do as a test is you want to just pull down the air and make sure that no water is coming out because if it is, that means something's dry over here, something's dry over here, and the needle's not sitting all the way forward. Okay, so, so you see that? Now we have a perfectly clean airbrush, so the next time we're going to be working, I'm going to be using that, so that makes life easy. So I have the Extreme Patriot Arrow here. And I do have some light mixture already in there. And I'm just going to make sure that it is working. We will make sure here as opposed to on the paint thing. Okay, so we have a nice light mixture in there. 
And now we can set up and start doing some modeling of the forms of this portrait. So let's go forward with that. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I might be able to get it for you later. I'm not sure. I do have his instant messenger on on Facebook, actually. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to darken this up. So how you been, Willie? I haven't seen you last week. I know we had problems with the live stream, so definitely wasn't your fault, sir. Always a pleasure to see you. Let's see. Okay, pull this up. Okay, I think we're in good shape. You see how things are sort of going to plan. So right now we're going to work on her eye. We always start on the... When you get to this stage, you always want to start at where is going to be your focal point. That's what you want to do at this stage. You want to find that focal point. So that's what we're going to do. There we go. We just want to slowly build up. Don't worry about the highlight in the eyes or anything. We're going to be doing that with the white pastel. And that's going to cover everything. Uh, I'm doing okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, cool. No problem. I will do, Mike. If I can find it, I'll get it to you, sir. Remember what I said about puddling? A lot of people who are painting an airbrush, you get to the point where you know, we have a lot of spidering. And I want you to think of this analogy. It's a very good analogy that really helps people understand the anatomy of a spidering. And what that is, is basically like in a rainstorm, when, when it's raining, the water sort of uh, soaks up the rain. However, when the, rain, the, the ground gets saturated when it rains very quickly or for a long period of time at the same spot, the, water, the ground gets saturated and then you have puddles. And that's the same thing that's happening. So when you are, are painting, you're staying in one spot and you're saturating your surface. Whether your surface is a, a board or a piece of metal, whether you're working in and create tax or what have you the same thing you're creating that puddle and when you create that puddle you're shooting air and when you shoot air at a puddle of water what does it do it spiders so that's what's happening so with that being said you want to make sure that you don't stay in the same area too long you let it dry you let that paper soak it up and this way you're not creating that puddle so when you go by, the paper soaked it up, and you're able to put more tone down. We just have to be patient when we are doing this. You know, it's Rome wasn't built in a day, so that's important, you know? A paper tube with a rubber straw. Now, what exactly is that? Is that, um, that's interesting. I'm not sure, Mike, is, is that, so Mike says they gave out cheap hillbilly, hillbilly screen pokers with rubber tips. A paper tube with a rubber tip like a straw. Now, what is that for, may I ask, Mike? Sounds interesting. So the airbrush I'm using is my sort of souped up Extreme Patriot Arrow. It's not the one you would get if you just ordered it. I made some changes to it to really make it the premier, I feel, the premier detailed airbrush on the market today, you know? So there we see we established one eye and then we're gonna go ahead and establish eye number two. This is our focal point, this is our secondary focus, and 
third focus, that sort of thing. So we're directing the eye. We're like a movie director. And you know, like when they shoot scenes and they want to direct the eye to certain images and whatnot, that is something that we do as artists as well. So we did have a few technical issues today, but that's okay. How oh, to push the computer screen buttons, I see. Very rarely, if you look, that one pupil is the same size, one iris is the same size as the other. One eye is very rarely the same size as the other eye. Just like our right arm and our right leg is bigger than our left leg, if that's your dominant, and vice versa, if you're a lefty, your dominant side is always going to be a bit larger. And I think that's the same when it comes to eyes, you know, it's very rarely that people have the exact same size eyes. So what we're going to really concentrate on in this, as always in my live streams, is our values, right? But values along with edges, you know, hard and soft edges and how they relate to each other and how one edge differs from the other, how one shape sort of uh, borders with another shape. Very, very important. There we go. Now, sometimes you'll have a problem where, let's say, things will sort of crawl underneath and you can go in the opposite direction. So if you go this direction, the air is not going to crawl underneath and neither is the ink. So that's something to really pay attention to. I'm just going to spray some air on here, some eraser shavings, make sure that's not there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to model the shadows. So again, still the one second rule, but I'm squinting my eyes and looking at the big shapes. You want to look at those big shapes before you look at the details. So definitely, definitely make sure you do that. She should be squinting because of her hair in front of her eye. Yeah, that's true. It's maybe it just fell by her eye, right? But I definitely agree, Mike. And that's the kind of thinking I like when I'm working on a portrait. Really try and like make up a story about, if I don't know the person, make a story up about, about the person, about the photo. And that kind of helps it to be more interesting. So one of the things that we're doing is we're taking a three-dimensional form, right? A three-dimensional form, and we're turning it into a two-dimensional object. So we're going from one dimension and we're removing a dimension. When we do that, the image always loses something. Just like going from two dimensions to one dimension, it loses something. So what we have to do is try and get as many of the qualities of a three-dimensional object into our painting. And that's why edges are so important. Because that's one of the qualities of three-dimensional forms. Well, the, the person is definitely not lopsided, Mike, you know? So you, you, you're having a feeling that this is lopsided? It's still early. Remember, the game's not over until it's over. 
But you never get worried about whether it's a lightness or anything like that. You're going to work from the beginning to the end. You're going to stick with the program and you're not going to worry about detail too early. If you worry about detail too early, you'll paint yourself in the corner. And you know what that looks like when you paint yourself in the corner, you can't get out. So, you definitely don't want to do that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, it's, it's, you know, you can even make up a funny story, right? You know, it, it's really cool when we do that. I find it more interesting, like, when I do that. But I really love painting people I know and care about. Uh, that's, that's always, uh, to me, makes a much more profound painting, you know, and uh, familiarity about it. I like that. But we don't get to do that, especially with COVID-19 and everything like that. It's hard to get a live model, you know, to pose for you live. So a lot of times we have to work with photographs, sometimes people we don't know, but we have to stay in practice. So I'm not, so we're not really caring whether it looks like her. I know I drive my students crazy when I say that. Don't worry whether it looks like her or not. That's not important at this stage. Right now what's important are the large shapes from the big to the small, squinting our eyes. <laughs> if you want cell portraits, that's why I don't paint cell portraits because I know all my stories and I don't want to relive them, right? <laughs> so yeah, cell portraits are hard, you know, they are emotionally difficult. Have you done one, Mike? I've done one when I was a kid, you know, like in art school, and yeah, it was too revealing, you know, too emotional. When they're done right, of course, you know, with the right frame of mind. Okay, so remember we covered up her nose, her nostril, the wing of her nostril, so we're going to do that again because that's, sometimes the form is described by its adjacent form rather than the form itself. So that would be in this case right here. See that? We describe the nostril not by painting the nostril but by painting what's around it. Can you see that? See how cool that is? I think that's pretty cool. We're going to continue modeling the forms here. When we come in detail, I'll zoom in, of course. But right now, we're just going to model the forms. And we have that night, nice white base, right? That really gives us uh, some depth when we come in. Even with the light mixture, we have depth already, which is really great. Yeah, that's right. Only one cell portrait, right? Because after we do one, we're exhausted. Right, uh, Bill? I feel... I'm exhausted after doing a uh, self-portrait, I'll tell you. I'd rather paint a beautiful woman. So you see as I'm coming with this eyebrow, right, and I'm going this way, but I don't want to continue because look, they'll lift up there, right? When that lifts up, the paint, the ink will go underneath and you'll have that sort of, uh, you know, Falling of the ink underneath your frisket. Well, this is not a frisket. This is a shield that I made out of paper, which is far better. So I want you to use this technique, you know, you see that? You'll see that it does not damage your surface and it just, you can lift it off like that. See that? Look how clean that is. It's just so beautiful. And then you can put that right back just like so. And it doesn't damage the surface in any way. So it's so if you ask me, for the most part, frisket is no more. I'm not going to be using frisket anymore. 
unless I'm working on a very big piece, but still. Okay, remember we're, we're modeling the forms, right? So we're looking at how everything is turning. So you see, light's coming from this side. What's facing the uh, right side, especially right upper, is going to have a lot of light. What's facing the right is going to have light. What is uh, in the middle of facing the right and facing the left, such as this uh, sort of front part of her nose, is a mid-tone. You see how that works? And then on the other side is where the shadows start. So it's an understanding of what's happening with the light and and her form that's going to help you to create three-dimensional, powerful three-dimensional objects. I mean, she's a person and, you know, with a, a mind and, you know, all kinds of thoughts, but we're just an object as well, you know? So what we're doing is doing both. We're painting the object and also the object in which the person lives in. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. I'm just going to work out this part over here. We're just going to establish this dark. I'm pretty far away from the surface right now, probably about four inches. Okay. And we are definitely modeling the form of our forehead. So you see this? I really uh, hate, I'm an artist, but I really hate to have paint on my hands. It's very funny. I really hate that. So that's why I'm always, you know, trying to be neat as I go. I'm not a tidy person. That's something I'm working on now. That's my new resolution. I don't wait to New Year's Eve to New Year's Day to have my resolution. So my resolution is to be a lot more of a tidy person. And it's really helping out my art. Bill says the only likes masking with sharp line things. I see. Definitely. That's cool. I'd rather take care and blend in. Definitely. That's definitely a good, uh, a good way of looking at it. You know, my thing lately, Bill, is uh, cleanliness. So I'm just trying to make everything as clean as possible. So I feel that doing as many freehand shield and masking really gives me that edge that I'm looking for now. It might be different, you know, from one month to the next. But right now I'm just looking for those, uh, looking for those beautiful, beautiful clean lines, you know. That's my thing right now. That's my bag, baby, as uh, Austin Powers would say. <laughs> and let's see. So let's take a look and uh, start to model the areas around the mouth. Very cool. So. Remember, we also, we're not working two-dimensional, like if we were just, you know, drawing on the surface. We're working in three dimensions. So here, you know, if I'm over here, there's no way I can actually work on my painting, right? So you see, um, I have to touch the surface. I have to touch the surface to work on it. I can put more pressure and less pressure and that would help me to uh, go darker and lighter. But if I'm further away from the surface, nothing's going to happen. The beauty of airbrush, and we want to make sure we exploit and take advantage of the qualities of a medium, is that we could work in three dimensions. So the further I'm away, the lighter it's going to get. Also, the wider the spray and the... Uh, you know, the atomization uh, is going to be a little bit wider so we can get more texture. So I want you to take advantage of working in three dimensions as far as, you know, making sure you go from close to far away.
that's really going to help you control because you're going to find by doing those things it opens up to a lot of variations in how dark and light it can go, you know? Hey Todd, good to see you man. How are you sir? Always good to see Mr. Todd. Thanks for coming by. Live from San Diego, right sir? So, so how's the weather in San Diego? Probably beautiful. It's always beautiful in San Diego. That's what they say. Is that true, Todd? You know, the weather is always very uh, beautiful there. I know you don't have those winters uh, we have in the Northeast, right? So that's good to hear. Steve-O, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Always a pleasure. So I was showing people the uh, magazine that you were in. You're in this month. That's pretty cool. So congratulations on that, Mr. Leahy. So if you guys haven't caught uh, Steve Leahy's live stream, it's on his Facebook channel, Facebook page, Steve Leahy. And just amazing uh, how much you learn from his live streams are just ridiculous. And and Bill has a, a channel, W. Leon Artistry. I, Definitely recommend that. There's some really great uh, tutorials he has on there. Just blows you away. So definitely check out Bill. So go ahead and do that as well. Yeah, that's true. Did you see that? Uh, I didn't even realize that my painting was in there. It was in the Reader's Gallery. So I was, I was laughing, you know. I was like, okay, well, that's a nice surprise. So if you ever feel like it's uh, spraying just a little bit erratically, could be a number of things. You just want to make sure that you check the tip. You make sure you blow out the airbrush a little bit. You don't ever want to have a blowout on your painting. So definitely want to make sure that we we take care of that off to the side on a test paper always have a test paper that's the same substrate that you're using because you're not going to know uh, what's going on if you're working on a different surface so you want to work on the same surface so you say okay that looks dark that looks light then I can continue My guest says that magazine is kind of expensive for it is a year for something like 45 bucks. Oh, okay. And uh, so Todd says we're getting a cool down next week. 83 degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool down. Oh, that's funny, Todd. Yeah, I do love my mid, uh, northeast, my northeast uh, autumns, though. You know, November is my favorite month of the year. Although, well, October is not too shabby either. And I'm just going to work on just establishing that eyebrow. I'm not going too crazy into that, you know. Uh, how many pages is the magazine? It's not a very thick magazine, that's for sure, you know. Raise the air pressure just a bit. Okay. So what happened was whenever you feel like, okay, it's a little erratic, a lot of times you're running out of ink or paint. So when you feel things that are happening like that, you want to have your little checklist, right? A little checklist that's going to tell you, okay, what's happening to the airbrush? You know, you maintain your airbrush 
just like anything else, you're going to know it. You're going to know when things feel a little different, right? So... Go and I'm also going to spray some water through this. There we go. Spray some water out. The good thing about India ink, it's non toxic. It's not something that, I mean, it's not something you want to breathe in, like, but it's not like there's no chemicals. It's basically soot and water. And I think a little bit of binder, so it's probably the healthy, one of the healthiest things you can spray, that's for sure. And plus with my India ink mixtures, I'm diluting it, so I'm diluting the you know watches out of it, so it is really uh, diluted in that sense, so definitely a healthy way to paint. not going to be doing too much you know before I move on to the hair I don't want to I don't want to go too far ahead of another aspect we want to paint the painting together you know oh so Mike says it's a pinstriping magazine at the same price that's 68 pages wow that's that's a good value right that's definitely cool but, you know, they all have their, you know, operating costs and everything. And as a magazine gets bigger, you know, better advertisers and, and perhaps they could, you know, put in more articles and whatnot. So I know it's uh, very expensive to run a magazine, that's for sure. But I'm really thankful for the, you know, Airbrush Step-by-Step Step and Airbrush the Magazine, you know, carrying the torch after Airbrush Action Magazine went belly up. You know, uh, you know, they sort of went bye bye. And, but, you know, we didn't miss a beat. We have those other two magazines keeping things going. So, thank God for that. Yeah, it's uh, low volume. It's hard to keep costs down. So, yeah, that's true. I hear you. A magazine is definitely uh, a rough business to get into, that's for sure. So I'm back with my light mixture, doing some tests, making sure the needle is all the way pressed up to the nozzle so it's not shooting out ink before I pull back on the trigger. Those are very important things to really consider before you start working on your painting. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and let's go, let's jump right into it. We'll work on the larger shapes around her mouth and then we'll go into the mouth. Well, I think working in the mouth is a lot better. I think that's a better way to put it. We're rated PG-13 here at Tim's live stream. Oh, G. Clay's, right? I think G. Clay is French for a very expensive print. Yeah, I can't be bothered with that. Just cannot be bothered with that. I find a print business is not a business at all. People deserve and want the originals, so I paint more so I can give more originals and sell more originals. So now that I went ahead and, you know, refilled the airbrush, it's just working very nice. The airbrush is singing, which is good.
Let's use our freehand shield to make sure we separate the lips from her teeth there. Like I said, it's all about cleanliness with Tim. You know, you don't want to have that airbrush look where everything's sort of, uh, you know, blending into each other and all the edges are soft. That's what I call chronic airbrush look. And that's something we don't want. Coming from the fine art world, I used to see that chronic, air, chronic airbrush look and, you know, kind of stopped me from getting an airbrush. But then I saw the great work of people like you guys out there. And then I was like, you know what? There's something to that, you know? So, but yeah, but you see those vans with the, with the wizard? <laughs> You know, at the wizard and, you know, on the, on the uh, 1970s van, that was kind of the airbrush artwork I was exposed to. So that's why I didn't get into airbrush as a young man. I didn't want to do wizards on side of a, uh, side of a customized van. Yeah, definitely. The air, the uh, I was reading that it was something like a fifty million dollar industry, uh, just the regular uh, airbrush, not the paint guns. So yeah, it definitely there definitely is uh, a market, a market share out there, and people can make a living if they cater to the airbrush artists. So that's something to think about. You know, you guys out there who know about airbrushing to share your knowledge and really help out airbrush uh, aspiring airbrush artists established airbrush artists you know you feel their pain and you could uh, you know be a service to them so it's very cool so you see right now I am not going to go much more detail than I am but I'm just going to establish some of the large shapes here. Remember, if I want a lighter value, I'm just going to increase my distance, right? It's important. Right here we have a corner of her mouth, and a corner of her mouth is actually inserting into her cheek here and it's creating an indentation and it's creating part of her flesh that is actually turned away from the light so that's why we are actually painting a shadow because of the indentation causing that part of the flesh that is now tilted away from the light which is creating more shadow not as much shadow let's say as the corn this side of the knows that's getting no light but it's a relative absence of light and when you have that that is when you go ahead and put down tone remember we're not just arbitrarily copying values copying values will when you're painting a person or anything is going to uh, translate rather weakly not weekly as in four times a month <laughs> weekly that's not strong so we're looking for that now let's see right now the nose is tilting down remember the light is upper right and if it's down it's not going to be facing the light so it's going to have a relative darkness same thing here so rather like very indented here a nose right so if it's indented more than let's say the corner of the mouth there it's going to be facing the light even less and it's going to be even darker so you see that is how we uh, basically uh, decide what's lighter and darker <laughs> Hey, when the van is rocking, don't come a knocking, right, Willie? <laughs> I always wanted to get one of those signs. I, 
I think that it just doesn't work in my 1999 Chevy Cavalier, you know? But yeah, I would love to band with, you know, to get like an artist who could reproduce that 1970s sort of chalky, all blended together wizard, you know? <laughs> that would be great. What do you think, guys? That would be a chick maggot, uh, magnet for sure. All the girls would definitely want to get in that van, right? Not, you know. <laughs> okay, so now I am going to... See, one of the things is, you see her mouth there? Something like that. I would practice on a smaller piece of paper. And that's what I'm going to do off camera. I'm going to practice. And then next week we'll go ahead and do it. But I'm not going to do it for the first time on my painting because that's very in-depth and you have to know exactly what steps going where. Otherwise you could, you know, miss the, miss the, the whole thing. So when you have a difficult area like that, go ahead and do that. So we're going to lift this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so see that? I'm pretty happy with that. And I think that's a very good uh, beginning uh, of the face because look at this beautiful edge work you have here. That's what I was saying, Bill. Yeah, I could... James, how's it going? Good to see you. How's everything? Nails, tattoo, blemish, cover. Yeah, that's true. The air, airbrush industry, multi-billion dollar. That's true when you go and deal with the whole, you know, with custom and makeup and tanning. I was just thinking just the fine art is like something like 50 million, you know? So good point there, sir. Definitely. So this is cleanliness is what I'm about. So we're going to take our beautiful lady. And well, she's not our beautiful lady, but she is beautiful. I'm just going to put her over here. And I'm going to put her here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to use her and we're going to go ahead and start working on the light area on this side. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make this happen. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, see this blade? It's dull. It's dull like my love life. Okay. I'll be here all week. All right. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Turn this in. Minions! And learn how to paint minion nails. Oh, that would be really cute. That would be fantastic. I love that. See, that's a good idea. That, you're a romantic guy there, Bill. I don't care what they say. That's good. <laughs> that's neat. That's pretty cool. She's going to love that. See, I would paint women's nails, but they, they don't let me get close to them. <laughs> so that's that, you know? So that's good. You're... Women let you get close to you, so that's a good thing, my friend. Oh, how neat. That's really cool. So James says he does regular trading and covering tattoos requires a good grasp of tone and hue. Yeah, definitely, right? You got to you got to fade that out. Uh, you got to make sure you soften those edges. So I definitely can see, James, how that could definitely be uh, a skill needed, right? That's for sure. See, I'm making these little triangles because it's better than a hole punch because I could make them in a line and not these small little holes. Remember, I was big on frisket until I realized that frisket was not necessary. So I have a new workshop student this week, a Mr. Johnson. 
So I'm excited for for that. I'm always happy to uh, have another artist underneath my wing. And so that's always exciting. So, so I do a workshop. Believe it or not, my workshops are 18 hours. And they are only $200.99. And you get free ink mixtures, which is a $16.95 value. And so I even pay for the shipping. And uh, so that's something to think about. You know, my artists who have taken the workshops, their work just explodes. They, the before and after is really wonderful to see and makes me feel like I picked the right way to make a living, you know? So Brad says, Frisket sucks. <laughs> Take your time cutting these out. Good moment to just sort of relax your mind, you know. Don't relax it too much because you have a sharp uh, tool in your hand, you know. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. Almost at the end here, but we want to be all the way around. We want to make sure that we don't get too much underspray, not overspray. We're protecting the overspray, but we are vulnerable to underspray. So I know we are have a lot less people today because of the um, vice president uh, debate, right? That's going on. But I can understand uh, why there's less people today. But like I said, I don't care how many people are here. I just want the right people here. The people who need to learn this stuff. That's what it's all about. So if you go to paintingcliffs.com, you can see all the materials that I use. And they're available for purchase right down to these gloves. How cool is that? These gloves are important. They keep your most important fingers free, but protect your painting from these fingers and this part of your hand. Again, cleanliness. Cleanliness, that's a big theme with my work. Tidy. You want to be tidy. So look at that guys, that's pretty good, right? So we'll get our, you don't want to get tape that super sticky, but you don't want it to be not sticky. So right in the middle. And we're just gonna make sure we, so one of the important things you cover up every one of these holes, because if you don't, you're gonna have a wonderful shape of one of these holes on your model's face. And she is not going to appreciate it. Oh yeah, so so Mike's right. This actually keeps uh, keeps the uh, the uh, shield here, the little stencil I'm making, and that's going to allow me to get that beautiful edge along her hair on the right side. You see that beautiful dark? We're gonna work on that, and this is gonna actually enable us to get the most beautiful clean uh, line which is gonna be good. So one of the things is you wanna make sure that you don't go over, right? Because you don't wanna create an edge that's not there. So that's why we pull that out. You don't want anything overlapping, right? You definitely don't wanna do that. Take your time when doing anything, you know, there's no rush. Even now I'm demonstrating, I'm not in a rush, you know. If I go ahead and do it super fast, and that's not how I do it in real life, then that's me being a liar. So I want you to see the flow of work. 
the workflow. Oh, I used to hear them say that when I worked at Amazon. Boy, their words were like poison, you know, the supervisors. Ugh, it was horrible. What a horrible experience that was. Horrible times 10. And that's really going to, you know, that really fuels me to not want to ever do that again. You know, just their words, everything they said, workflow. Workflow is a good word, but the fact that they said it makes me nauseous. Um, so that's cool. That's true, Mike. It does work great, and it's a better alternative than magnets. Because, like I said, magnets get dirty. And when you spray on them, especially if you're an acrylic painter, they're going to get dirty, and they're going to sometimes redeposit the dried paint onto your next painting, right? So you have to be diligent to make sure that they are clean. This way you don't gotta worry. Plus you're more in the game here, you know? You're, you're more involved in the process. Anything that makes, so one of the things that is crucial is to make sure there are no holes here. Because remember, when we're spraying around it, overspray will find that hole and deposit that shape onto her face so you don't want to do that also you never want to have these extending outside of the contour because then you're changing the contour then you're gonna have a face with a triangle coming out and she's not gonna like that either okay so there we are so let's bring her back there she is and pull in my chair Okay, so now we have to find relative. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it as perfect as possible. And since we want it as perfect as possible, I'm going to put my glasses on. There we go. So we got that correct. I'm going to get her, this part of her cheek correct. So we'll start up here, right? And there we go. So it looks like we're we're firing all cylinders here. So what we can do, you can just take uh, like the back of your pencil or something, or just your finger. You don't want to make any indentations. So just your finger, not the back of a pencil, because that can indent the paper. And you don't want to make indentations on the paper. And that's really, pretty good right there right I think so what do you guys think okay oh Mike said he stored an airbrush artist used magnetic magnetic paper for his stencils for automotive painting that's pretty cool see there's always a your own way of doing things right and you find your own secret sauce, right? And that's what we want to do. Uh, find your own way. And that comes from working. The more you work, the more your own way of, of doing it's going to happen. So right now, I'm just going to establish this beautiful hard edge. See that? Now, I'm not going this way. Because if I go this way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to creep underneath. And I don't want to do that. So I want to go this way. See that? Very important. Even when I'm not going super dark, I still have a beautiful edge here. So I want to make sure that I'm hitting those edges. So when I lift this off, voila, I have a beautiful edge. I'm even going to go a little bit darker with this. So uh, I don't have to come back. But once you establish those edges, it's almost impossible to unestablish the edges, right? You know, you ever notice once you put in an edge like this, it's pretty much there for the life of your painting. You can also use your finger. Like I said, I don't like getting dirty, but I'll sacrifice that for my art. One second rule is always in effect. It's never not in effect, so always pay attention to that. 
the hole punch is not as effective. I know it's a little bit quicker, but then you have these little tiny holes. So this way you have larger holes, and I think you have, uh, it's a little bit better for me. So I'm actually liking this a little bit better, you know? So is anyone else hearing an echo, or is that just me? Or is that just Mike? Because I'm, I'm not hearing an echo. Let me double check. I'll do a quick test here. No, that just might. I'm, I'm not hearing an echo. Let me double check. I'll do a quick test here. No, that just might. I'm not hearing an echo. So I'm hearing a slight echo, but nothing too bad. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting live stream now that uh, YouTube went ahead and fixed everything. Did you sense the sarcasm there, guys? There we go. Same thing over here. On this side of the hair is light, but then we could work on some of the large... Remember, we're squinting our eyes and looking at the large shapes, guys. Know your airbrushes. Sometimes it might get a little sticky at the at the edge it could be a little bit of of uh, tip dry and then a tiny bit of the needle sticking so those two things are easy to fix and then when you do that you're like ah now nah, that's the way i want it so yeah so you want to be almost like an airbrush whisperer like i said at this stage Make it as beautiful as possible, but realize that, you know, not every stage is going to be beautiful. Your job is to make it as beautiful as possible. No, it's not me, my friend. I think it has to do with uh, with YouTube. But thanks for letting me know, Mike. Definitely. So, if you guys hear something weird? Definitely let me know. Now, when I say hear something weird, don't let it be my voice. I know that's already weird. So. Okay, so you see I established, and I can go back in with this, but just to show you how we establish that dark, right? So, see this? So, see how we establish that? And now, we already have some nice things going on here, and I'm happy about that. So, it's all about, you know, establishing, establishing the big picture so we can go in and... Uh, you know, start painting in the details from the large to the small, right? That's what we want to do. Do I need to lighten her up a bit? Let's see. Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay. And so here you can see that we have that hard edge, but that's followed by some soft edges over here. And we'll soften that up as we go. And this is where it's going to be cropped right here. See, I already established that hard edge, so it's even hard to get rid of that hard edge. It's just beautiful and sitting there for me, which is great, you know? COVID is getting bad when Tim makes, uh, makes his art wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a little, that's true, right? She did wear a mask. Very astute, sir. That's true. I'm going to take my new eraser. And what I can do now is I could erase a little bit. And I'm going to use, always use the least aggressive eraser uh, when you can. And then if you need, go to a more aggressive eraser, right? You don't want to start with the most aggressive eraser because you might not need to do that. So try the least aggressive and then go from there. And 
what we can do is remove some of that white. And with the Drew Blair's illustration, 50-50 white, with my mixture, it's really cool because you can actually remove it. It's very erasable, which is cool. Okay, so now we're going to sculpt out some of the details of her nose here. And like I said, you go from your least aggressive, and then if you need to go to a more aggressive eraser, so be it, but you want to go to the least aggressive first. It's always a good rule of thumb. So we always want to make sure that we are being subtle, even though we're doing the larger shape, larger forms, we still want to have a subtlety about our work. We don't want to be too harsh. But we also don't want to be too soft either. We got to find that sweet spot. See right here, we could just pull away just a little bit of that white that we put in with the with the Vega 1000. Highly recommend the Vega 1000 to be your, you know, your larger detail, your larger, more covering airbrush. Definitely recommend that. Oh, so you're, so, oh, so, so Bill's going to be 53. Happy birthday in a couple of weeks. And your wife will be 38. Very cool. And oh, so Mike was 60. Happy birthday, everybody. So on September 15th, that's cool. Uh, Brad says uh, that Bill's a young pup. That's funny. And as you can see, we're just keeping things subtle, pulling out some whites. And like I said, let's not worry about likenesses. Let's stick with the program. Stick with the technique and they'll fall into place when it's ready. But if we continue looking with the one second rule, stuff like that, things seem to uh, go ahead and fall into place. Okay, so back to making things turn. Remember, the light source is coming from the upper right. And so lower left is going to get more shadow, more absence of light. Okay. And the absence of light doesn't stop there, right? It, like right here, there's an indentation, like a cleft, or I don't know if it's a cleft, that's not the word for it, but this little indentation in her chin there is very cute. I like it. And uh, so what we're going to do, that's receiving light, but this side is not receiving light because it's on what? It's on the left side. And it's, but it's turning slowly, it's not a harsh turn. So you see it's not totally dark, it's sort of a light dark, right? So you see how we're doing that, we're paying attention to what's happening, you know? So like I said, this is a technique. This is not just your average live stream where I'm just showing you guys, you know, this is how you airbrush. This is a very specific way of airbrushing. It's like a marriage between drawing and airbrushing at the same time. So I highly recommend it if you want to learn how to get control of your airbrush, uh, to get better control of your airbrush, to get better understanding of the visual world. This is definitely the route to go. So I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, definitely think about my workshops. Now, if you 
join my workshop afterwards, you're eligible to be in my mentorship program. My mentorship program is only $100 a month, and we meet uh, once a week as individuals, and then a group once a week. Uh, so you get two, two sessions a week for $100. You're not going to get that anywhere in the world. So we'll, we'll work on a project together, but we'll also be working as a group on a project. So and concepts and learning about digital art. But you have to be in. If you're going to be in my mentorship program, you have to first be in my workshop. Now, as far as industry prices, it's ridiculous. I'm going broke, but it's something I want to do. Is that you know it's only two ninety nine for eight hours and you get free less than this you get free ink mixtures with that so it's quite cool Bradley is in my program right now and if you see the work that he's doing it's just blows my mind you know it's just really great to see but you know it's the workshop and then the mentorship program you just do a workshop and you go on your merry way, you're going to go back to the same old mannerisms. You're going to go back to the same way of painting. But with my 18-hour uh, workshop, we really, it's intense. We work together on a project. Uh, it's with Google Classroom. It's really in-depth. And we go from start to finish. If it goes over the 18 hours, it goes over the 18 hours. It's on your timetable if you're in the UK. I have UK uh, students right now, and we, I work around their schedule. I don't want them doing it at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, and if you want to do it once a week or twice a week or three times a week to finish that first project, that's cool. So definitely uh, at this point in my career, I'm giving back more than I'm taking, but I'm happy about that, you know. I'm not, I'm not uh, griping about it. So it's a great opportunity. So you want to go to paintedglitz.com. I'm going to put a link there so you can see uh, my workshop and how it works. And uh, it's very cool. So right there you'll see, uh, you know, more information about my workshop, which is really cool, you know. Hey, Cairo, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you so much. Am I saying it right? Cairo Celia. Cairo Celia. Cairo Celia. That's a really great word there. I love that. I love that. I don't know if that's your name. It's a great name if it means something else. It just sounds great off the tongue now, doesn't it? You know? So that's the link. So go ahead and hit that. If you want more information. And like I said, I don't leave you on the lurch. I have the mentorship program to dive deeper into, you know, all the information that I learned over 30 years of painting in different mediums. Learning about the three-dimensional world, how it works, how to paint people with the knowledge of anatomy, the knowledge of light, you know. I don't want to go too dark. Everything's going to look dark at this point, but it really isn't, right? So uh, so this is like the first two hours. So look how fast it develops. It's really, it's really great. Those nostrils look really dark, but don't worry. Everything's going to be darkening around it. So those nostrils are going to have to go darker later. So it's pretty cool when you work on the painting as a whole, not a piece, not just doing an eye, really detailed, going to the next eye and doing it that way, then you're not learning about the form. When you paint the ensemble, you're painting uh, a person with breath, with life. And that I learned from the fine art, fine art painters, you know? And Willie says, Sasha, uh, looking good. Thanks, Willie, I appreciate that, my friend. Uh, so cool. Extreme Value with Tim's Workshop, Brad says. Uh, 
way over 18 hours. That's true. I usually do that for my for my peeps, you know? Did I use the Venkio? No, not at all. Uh, I have a lot of different ways that I that I project, so uh, I, I do talk about things more in depth in my workshops than I do here. So that's another thing, you know, even though I'm really generous and I give a lot to you guys because I want everyone to enjoy airbrush, not those who just take in my workshops, but those who are taking my workshops, I go to the next level. So you learn about more in depth stuff like that. So I got to save some stuff for those guys, you know? Um, so have a great night there. Look at that. We're at 1128. You know, this is a nice relaxing live stream. Um, we learned a lot. I hope. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you were inspired to try this technique. And if you are, I hope you go ahead and use the link, paintedglyphs.com, and purchase the inks and all the other materials that you need to paint like this, you know? Combine drawing and airbrush together. I love that. There we go. Like I said, things might look harsh at this at this stage because everything is is very light, you know. But you know, we have these really harsh lights. Everything's gonna look dark, but everything's gonna fall into place soon enough. Probably week three, right? That's when things, the values fall in place. But we're working those values together. But look at these beautiful hard edges we have here. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that we have clean edges. That's what we're looking for. Clean edges. Okay, Tim, put the airbrush down. And I will get that for you by tomorrow. Uh, that email address for you, Mike. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. And thank you, Brad, for the great words. And always appreciate it. Very proud of the work you're doing. All right, so uh, next week we're going to go ahead and work on her beautiful mouth and her beautiful teeth and her lips and start making things turn but I have to say it's a very important stage one part one so take care